once I discovered permanent jewelry and how much money I could make compared to permanent brows, I was like, let's give this a shot. Let's see how it goes. And definitely my only regret is not doing it sooner. Can you still have a substantial income even though you have a newborn baby? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So this is Whitney. She's been working with me in my advertising agency for over a year now, about a year and a half. Um, but she recently started permanent jewelry. And um, Whitney, is this correct that you also have like a 10-week-old? Yes, I just had a baby uh, 10 weeks ago. And it's been uh... A little bit of chaos in our house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine. So that's your second kid, right? Yes. I also have a three and a half year old boy. Awesome. And um, so you are a beauty professional. Can you kind of talk about, you know, where you're located and what services you offer? Um, I am in Southern California um, and I offer permanent brows and permanent jewelry. Awesome. So um, before you started offering permanent jewelry, you know, how is the business doing and how has permanent jewelry really, you know, changed that? It was doing okay, I would say. Um, probably, you know, when you compare yourself to others on the internet, it, it wasn't, I wasn't blowing up, but I was definitely doing better than I would have been doing had I not hired you for advertising. Mm -hmm. um, but once I discovered permanent jewelry and how much money I could make compared to permanent brows, I was like, let's give this a shot. Let's see how it goes. And definitely my only regret is not doing it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, just like many other people, I, when I talked to you, I was like, Hey, Winnie, you need to add this to your business. You were like, I think you were pretty scared to start or scared to do it. Is that right? Definitely. Um, for just a average American family, you know, boy and a girl, <laughs> household, you know, type type class that we're in. It felt like a lot of money for me to let go of in the beginning, um, plus paying for ads, plus paying for marketing. It was just mm -hmm. like, oh, man, do I really want to spend all this money and maybe it won't work? And then it was like, you know what? You really do have to spend money to make money. And this is going to be something that's going to benefit our lives. And honestly, I... I didn't think it was going to fail, but I was like, you know what, if, even if it did fail, it, it's not something I'm going to like lose my house over. I'm not going to go bankrupt over this. Like, let's just jump in and try it. And it could make such a positive impact on my life. And it really has. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you admitting that because to be honest, like 90% of people I talk to are, are in the same boat. They're like, you know, I'm scared to make that investment. It is a lot of money to them. And, um, you know, it, it is an investment. And so like being able to, you know, show success stories like yours, where you, you were a little bit nervous about starting and then, you know, now you're wish you had done it sooner. So talk to us a little bit about the results you've seen, like how many you've, events you've done and what kind of money you're making. So I am not booked every single weekend. Um, because like I said, um, I have two kids at home, um, there, neither one is in school, obviously. And so I don't have like time during the week to be taking, to be doing events and stuff. I really just do stuff on the weekends when my husband's home to take the kids. Um, it's May right now. And I got my kit in January. And since then, I think I've done five pop-ups and I've still made way more money than I did in at my previous job. And so it, that was just like a no brainer to me. Yeah. What was your previous job? Um, I was in accounting. So I did uh, payroll for a construction company. And so I'd bring home, you know, a few hundred dollars a week. And it's funny to look back and go, okay, well, that was what I, that made me feel stable because it was a stable paycheck every single week. And so that was hard to let go of. But now I don't have a consistent income. It's not the exact same amount, of, you know, in direct deposited into my bank account every, every week, but I'm making way more money. And so yeah. I just had to kind of rethink how my income was going to be structured and become comfortable with that, that I had to go out and um, find the events, find the clients. And that's where you came in. Like, I, I didn't just open up my business and hang a sign in the window and, and then sit there and wait for because clients don't come knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. um, you have to go and hustle it. And, and I'm not in advertising. I didn't want to take the time to learn an entire new craft. I wanted to learn how to do 
what I like to do. And so why not hire somebody who is good at that, who can help bring those clients to me, you know? And so um, I want to stress to anybody watching this video that you don't get the clients, you get the lead. And then it's my job to follow up. So it's, that was an important, you know, mindset change mm -hmm. for me that I wasn't just, um, like I said, I wasn't getting that steady paycheck. I had to go find it, but somebody was going to help me get those leads in the door. Yeah. Basically like, that's a good point because I think business owners go through different stages of realization. Like a lot of times when people first open up, they think they'll magically get bookings. Like you said, like hang a sign on the door and people come in. doesn't work like that. And then they're like, oh. well, if I hire a marketer, I'll get instant bookings. doesn't work like that either. Like as a marketer, my job is to help you get in front of more people, the right people, um, and get people to raise their hand and say, hey, I'm interested in your service. But then as the business owner, you still have to talk to them and get them to book with you. And so, um, but the good thing is we do have trainings and, you know, we teach you how to do that and how to take a, someone who is interested into a repeat client. Um, so for someone who maybe is on the fence, whether they're looking at, you know, hiring a marketer like me or, you know, joining linked permanent dory training where we do teach some marketing stuff and we, you know, we go into depth about that, you know, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them one, um, just because somebody hasn't responded to you, if you reach out to them, doesn't mean they're ghosting you. Um, people get busy. People have lives outside of your business. Maybe, maybe my brow business or my jewelry business is like tip top of my mind all the time, but it's not on everybody else's mind all the time. So maybe they message me and they say, hey, I'm interested in brows or, hey, I, I really like your permanent jewelry. And I go, oh, okay, blah, 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 right back to them. And then I see that they read it, but then they don't respond back to me. I, I can't feel um, nervous to just reach out to them again or follow up with them because they didn't just suddenly become uninterested. They probably, maybe they were driving or maybe they were cooking dinner or maybe, you know, there could be a million other things. So, um, a big thing that I've learned from you is the fortunes and the follow up, you know, so yep. it's okay to just reach out again. And you know what, if they did fall out of love with you, they'll block you and it's fine. Just move on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so uh, I love that. And that's a great uh, piece of advice. So if you're watching or listening to this, you know, comment below if you have trouble with the follow up or if you forget to follow up with your leads, because I know sometimes, like you said, it's easy to assume that people are ghosting you and feel like you're bothering them, but you know, we all have busy lives. We all have different things going on. Maybe we have kids. And so it's easy to, you know, find a post you like or see an ad you like and click on it and maybe even send that business an inquiry, but then forget to message back or not have, you know, you move on with your life. And so that's where the follow-up is really key um, to close those deals. And so let's talk about booking um, events. Where have you found your events so far for Permanent Jewelry? So Jewelry events, my my most successful ones so far have been at hair salon. And I think that that's because one, you have built in clients from the hairstylists themselves. You go in, they're already in the beauty business. They're excited about doing things that are beauty related and they have to be there because it's their job. <laughs> it's their work. You're going to their workplace. Then you have uh, you know, you go in on a Saturday or a Sunday or a Friday or whatever on their busy days when there's a lot of women there and there's clients already there. They're not just walking by. They're there for their hair appointment and they're interested in beauty related things like getting their hair done, getting their lashes done, getting their brows done. Jewelry kind of falls right into that. And then um, then these people are sitting down with foils in their hair and they've got like 20 to 40 minutes of sitting there and they're over there watching you and they see your sign and they see you welding stuff and they see a spark and they see shiny things. And they're like, hmm, I've got time. Let me just mosey on over there and see mm -hmm. what's going on. And so they, I've had so many clients like not even there for jewelry. They're just there to get their hair done. But then they end up walking out with two, three bracelets because they're like, oh, that looks cool. What are you doing over here? You know? So um, I think hair salons have been like really key for me. Yeah. I think some people struggle with the idea of reaching out to businesses, but like as a permanent jewelry artist, like you literally have a skill set that's high in demand right now. It's a hot trend. It was recently featured on Netflix. Like it's easy to get attention with it. 
And so you are literally doing the, like, let's say a hair salon, you're doing them a favor by offering to do permanent jewelry there because it's going to bring in one attention to their business, potential new clients, and it's going to make their current, you know, existing customers happy and want to come in. And so yeah. you, you need to leverage the power of that, you know, the fact that it's a hot trend right now. Yeah, I definitely, when I reach out to hair salons or other businesses, I tell them, um, you know, hi. I'm Whitney. I do permanent jewelry. And um, I think I, I was wondering if if you'd be interested in doing a pop-up event at your salon. It brings a lot of foot traffic to both of our businesses. So it's a win-win for both of us. Um, I've had a lot of success for, at other hair salons in the area. So let me know if you're interested. Um, I, I'd love to work with you. And so just telling them that it's a win-win for both of us and that I've already had success at other hair salons, kind yeah. of, I think, their interest. I had just recently, just this last one that I did, I had um, a family of four women. So it was mom, daughter, and then their friends, mom, daughter. They came in and they were only there to get jewelry they didn't they just saw it on instagram and came to get jewelry um and then they as they were waiting because they were waiting in line for it they were like oh hair salon like uh, this is like really cute in here uh what what kind of services do you guys do you do uh brazilian blowouts here they're talking to one of the hairstylists so um and then the hair salon offered champagne so we really collaborated in advertising it on both of our social media platforms and um they they brought it you know brought in some customers for me from their clients and I brought some stuff for that you know clients for them so it was it really was a win-win for both of us yeah, for sure as a permanent jewelry artist you're going to get in contact with those people you're going to build that relationship and then you know you can bring them to your studio or salon or you can tell them when your next event is because the fact is nobody just wants one bracelet you know everybody wants multiple bracelets everybody wants a necklace it's it's addicting and so you know just establishing that initial connection with people is key yeah um i have had a couple of people reach out to me already saying um i love my bracelet it's it's so cute i get so many compliments on it uh where are you going to be next cuz i want to add a necklace or like, I saw that you did a ring on somebody. I want a ring now too. So um, it it's definitely not just like one purchase and then they're gone forever. They, they uh, follow you on social media. They see that you have new connectors and new chains and they're interested and they want to get matching stuff or they want to bring their friend in or their mom in. So it's, it's definitely not just one and done. Yep. So what would you tell those people who, you know, hang out on certain Facebook groups and they're like, oh, you shouldn't pay for training. You should learn everything free on YouTube. You should never invest in yourself. You know, having to pay a training company is a scam. Like, what would you tell those people? I would tell those people that, you know, there's so much more that you can learn from getting professional training rather than just seeking out um, the training on your own, you know, whether it's just searching Google or searching YouTube. Um, and you get all the training that you need from a program rather than trying to figure it out and wasting all of that time and wasting all of that energy um, trying to find the exact right ways to do things rather than just like paying for this training. You have all the videos right here, all the time that you're spending is watching these videos, learning the entire craft, getting your kit, practicing, and then learning stuff from people in the Facebook group in this community, rather than like, maybe you tried to learn it on YouTube, and then you did an event and you can't, you're at the event in front of customers, and you can't figure out why you keep blowing jump rings, or you can't figure out like, oh, I didn't think to bring this or bring that or whatever. And now that business that you're at, you know, whether it's a hair salon or whatever your venue is, they see that it wasn't that great of a, of an event, you know, because you weren't as professional as you could have been. Yeah. So, and that's a trend we've seen. Like we've had a lot of students say that like, you know, I do have another person in my area that has permanent jewelry, but all her customers or all their customers come to me to get their jewelry fixed when it breaks and it falls off because they just weren't trained properly. So they don't really know what they're doing. They try to figure it out themselves. And so, you know, I know like those people are probably thinking, well, you know, $3,000 is a lot of money. Like how much did you make in your last event? 
my last event, actually, I made $3,000. Um, and so uh, first did, when I first bought the training and the kit and everything, um, it was nervous because it was such a big purchase, but I ended up doing the option where you could make payments. And I did, um, I think it was 500 bucks a month. And so I was like, okay, in one event, all I have to do is a couple of bracelets. Like I could have a, an awful event. I could have an awful turnout and still just do a couple of bracelets and there's my monthly payment done. And so, and that's just one event per month. Like I could do more than that. And so it was like, okay, calm down. <laughs> I can make this work. This is going to be good. And turns out it was. Yeah. And you mentioned something to me before we started filming that I really liked. Um, you talked about how, like, even though you're, you know, your husband's the primary breadwinner and you're okay with that and he's okay with that, but you enjoy being able to also, you know, have your own income and do your own thing. And, and permanent jewelry kind of allows you to do that because you can still take care of your kids full time and do this, you know, every now and then on the weekend. Exactly. Um, it's, it's perfect. And it's something that I enjoy. It's fun to do. And yeah. so it doesn't feel like, a job it feels like oh i'm going to go to a party today and i'm gonna make thousand dollars who else can say that <laughs> yeah nobody besides like i don't know djs and strippers maybe they go to parties and make thousands but... <laughs> <laughs> not the rest of us yep exactly um all righty so um for those who like you know, maybe they're watching, maybe they're doing their research right now, trying to figure out what training company to choose. You know, I know there's other training companies out there, but nobody else has Jake Randolph. And I don't say that arrogantly. I just, you've been working with me for a year and a half now. So what are, what would you say that X factor is that I, I provide you guys? Um, Definitely the marketing. It's, it's just like, not just setting up the ads for us and ghosting, um, definitely we have that, um, you're always active on social media, giving us tips, giving us advice on what to do, um, videos, interviews like this. We learn from our other, other people in the community. Like I'm sure there's at least 10 people, if not hundreds of people, um, watching this and going, Oh, I took my brow course. I took my whatever beauty service you provide. And it said on this bullet point list of things you were going to get in the course, you were going to learn how to do microblading and all this other stuff and marketing. And have I seen one single minute of marketing from that course? No. Um, it's just constant help, constant advice. Um, it's and then also if you if we want like one on one, we can set up a call with either you or Tony. And I've I've taken advantage of that before. So I mean, it's. I never feel like, where is this guy? What am I paying for? Like, I'm certainly getting what I'm paying for. Yeah, it's funny because like everybody says they offer marketing now, like all the training companies, but I feel like we specifically go into very de you know, like in depth. Um, we just launched new videos also, like we're always adding to the course. And so it's something that I always, we always want to keep improving for our students. We never want to just get complacent. Yeah, um, I've never felt like, I've never felt like this wasn't worth it. And awesome. I've always been a saver. I'm like a very frugal person. And so it's hard for me to like let go of a dollar, you know, and mm -hmm. before working with you, paying this much money a month would have been like, oh, no way, no way. That's like more than my car payment. There's no way I could do that. But I would never get leads. I would never get the business if I didn't spend this money on marketing. You have to or or nobody's going to see your sign. You know, no, you're not going to get any clients in the door. Yep, for sure. Well, awesome. I, I appreciate the feedback and, um, you know, you shared some awesome tips on here. So, you know, if, if there's anything else that you think people should know, um, I, I guess a better question is like, if, I, if I'm on the fence right now, I'm like, okay, do I sign up with linked? Do I, do I go with the training? Like what's, what's your biggest piece of advice for them? Um, cliche, but just like, just do it, just do it, just try it. And um, what was reassuring to me is that there's no contract. It's not like I signed up for this monthly payment for a year. And if I didn't like it after three months that like, oh my gosh, I still owe this much money. It was just, you were very nonchalant about signing up. It was like, it's month to month. If you don't want to do it anymore, it's fine. Just let me know and we'll cancel it. Like, it's okay. So it, it was easy for me to um, just sign up and try it. And I was like, okay, I watched one of these interviews and was like, somebody had said like, give it three months. 
and because you're not going to get a hundred clients in the door after two weeks of marketing, you know, so give it three months. And if you truly don't get any results after three months, then go ahead and cancel it. And it was like, okay, I have enough money for that. I'm going to try it. And there's no way I would, I would stop it now because then my, my momentum would just stop, yeah. you know? So, and just to clarify, you're talking about my ad service, like my marketing yeah. agency. I don't, <clears throat> I don't want people to think about like, think that you're talking about linked where it's like, Oh, we're cancel linked after three months. Like it doesn't work that way. You just pay for the course. <laughs> Which, you know, you can learn how to do linked and then you've, you've figured out how to do permanent jewelry and you've perfected it, but you absolutely need the ads because they're who would know you exist if, yeah. If, if you didn't get in front of the right people. And that's what I've always said. It doesn't matter how good your welds are. It doesn't matter how good your, you know, if you, like you're a brow artist, it doesn't matter how good your brow technique and stuff is if nobody knows you, because if you have zero clients, you don't have a business. Right. Yeah. So. Um, but for anybody who's on the fence about um, going with linked for training, um, there nothing compares. Like you, like I said, you, you hear so many people tell you these days that they're going to um, provide marketing and they're going to guarantee this many bookings or this many events or this dollar amount. Like, how can you really guarantee that? You can't guarantee that. Like, I feel like you're just so upfront about what's included and the community that's been created through linked, like in the Facebook group. Oh my gosh, I've learned so much through mm -hmm. other artists. Like, using the search bar at the top and I'll type in pricing and a bunch of posts will come up about people asking questions about pricing. And maybe I've scrolled through and a question has come up that I didn't even know I had. And then I'm like, Oh yeah, good question. What did, what did, you know, 50 other people have to say about this? And then I've learned it wasn't even necessarily from you. It was just from the community that's been created through this yeah and I, I love that because like i know when i'm trying to learn stuff and everything i always love facebook groups and this one has been it's turned into and i'm not just saying this because i'm the owner but the facebook group really is like a gold mine of information it's like like you said you can search anything and it's like an encyclopedia encyclopedia um <laughs> and it's not just from me or sarah it's from all this community all the students and everybody sharing their experience and knowledge it's just a beautiful thing and everybody is so positive and helpful it's it really is such an empowering community i feel like these days everybody's like women empowering women but then don't actually do anything about it and this group is absolutely empowering you can go on there and be like i made this much money today and everyone's like yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so like oh i didn't do that you know everybody's really helpful and I'm really glad for that because like I know in other Facebook groups, it's just like constant negativity and everybody's complaining or talking about how they're going out of business and all this stuff. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like come to LinkedIn, we'll, we'll, we'll fix you. <laughs> and it's so easy to just these days, everybody's just staring at their phone and scrolling and scrolling. It's so easy to go down the rabbit hole of like all these, all this negativity, like, oh, my business is not doing well. Like maybe get off Facebook then. <laughs> like, <Yep>. go out. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that's a good way to end the podcast. Um, you know, if, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Um, we're, we've got videos like this coming out every single week. And if you're on the podcast, please leave us a review. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate that. Um, anyways, thank you, Whitney, for always being an awesome client for me. And uh, thank you for coming on here and sharing your knowledge and your experience. Thank you, Jake. I appreciate it. Alrighty. Bye. Bye.